Ambulance services, the patient breathing. Just to update, uh, this is an 18-year-old male having a fit. I need an ambulance because my head's really hurting me. Oh, OK. Every day, West Midlands Ambulance Service answers around 3,999 calls. So she had any crushing or severe aching pain. The number of calls has been increasing year on year, putting enormous pressure on the emergency care system. From when I first started, the activity in a shift is, is a hugely more than we used to do. There used to be times where we were very quiet, but, but now we, we sort of seem to be getting busier month by month. It is getting a lot busier. The demand is very high. The ambulance staff are on the go all the time. It's not difficult to phone 999 now. It's free from your mobile, so it's not hard to do it. You haven't got to find a payphone. So people just tend to use us as first resort instead of second or third resort. With the number of 999 calls rising by an average 5% a year, West Midlands Ambulance Service is undergoing a massive transformation to make sure it can meet the increased demands while continuing to provide high-quality patient care. The whole purpose of this is to save more lives and to provide the most appropriate response and the most appropriate service to patients. This patient's now cardiac arrest, CPR and program. OK, that's received, thank you. The ambulance service has changed uh, substantially over, an, over a number of years with greater use of technology, greater use of innovation, but also by providing additional paramedic training to be able to treat more patients in their own home safely and appropriately without the need to go to hospital. It's the right thing to do for patients and, of course, takes pressure off other parts of the system, in particular reducing um, attendances at emergency departments. In the old days, the main job of ambulance crews was simply to get patients to the nearest A&E as soon as possible. They had limited clinical skills and no life-saving equipment on board. Things really have changed. Today, every call from within our 5,000 square mile patch comes to one of our two interlink control centres. One's at Briley Hill in Dudley, the others in Stafford. If you call 999 from a landline, state-of-the-art technology instantly pinpoints the house you're calling from. Calls from mobiles are located to within about 50 metres. As soon as we know where you are, highly trained call takers immediately find out what kind of help you need. And tell me exactly what's happened. Oh, I've got this really, really bad headache. If there's any chance your condition is life-threatening, there'll be no delay in sending an ambulance. If the call taker's questions reveal it's less serious, they'll arrange more appropriate help. If you don't require an ambulance, then you have a GP. You may have to attend A&E yourself. Uh, it could be a district nurse or one of our paramedics who are in the control room may ring you back to triage you further to see if there is anything that we can do for you. Is she able to cough noisily or speak? No. If the call taker has any doubts about how best to respond, there's always a clinician working alongside them in the control room. My job is, is to assist the call takers if there's any complexity with the calls, because unfortunately not everything is black and white. Do you know what they're choking? It's food. Just keep, as long as they can cough, just keep encouraging them to do that. The other way that they do it is so the call taker passes the patient directly to us so that we speak to the patient. I think most people, when they do call 999, expect an ambulance to come out to them to be assessed. However, it's not always in their interest, so we've got district nurses, we can advise them to attend walk-in centres, GPs, in-hours and the out-of-hours doctors as well. And we can also tell patients where it's safe to make their own way to the hospitals as well. If staff think there is any risk to the patient, they'll either suggest they go to hospital or send an ambulance to their address immediately. However, with our staff trained to ever higher levels of clinical knowledge, the percentage of patients actually going to hospital is falling ever closer to the 50% mark, as more patients are treated in their own homes. We're nearing our target of having a qualified paramedic on every vehicle. That means 70% of our frontline staff being paramedics, the highest level of any ambulance service in the UK. One five of us. Rich Bebbington works on one of about a hundred rapid response cars that operate across the region. Based in the community, he's closer to patients and arrives at emergencies fast. Okay, we're going to a 79-year-old male. 
that's uh, fainted. He's had a heart attack two weeks ago. Paramedics have provided an invaluable frontline service for many years. But with advanced training, they're now able to do even more. Before, we, uh, what we used to do is, is go and examine a patient, but we didn't have the backup knowledge of the respiratory system, cardiovascular system. But now we've got no, more of an understanding of what things mean. It means overall that we can leave more people at, at home rather than having to travel to hospital. And when a patient does need to go to hospital, Rich's training means their assessment and treatment can start sooner. We've had increased training on uh, ECG interpretation, so something like a heart attack, that we can, we can look to see if they're definitely having a heart attack. The central nervous system check that we, we do that can give us a better idea if they're actually having a stroke or something else. Victor Keeler, 4186, over. Well, now, Billy Mayo, chest pains. Details coming through to you now, Ideally, we'd have an ambulance and paramedic on every street corner. But obviously, that's not realistic or possible. But we can now be very accurate in predicting where and when our staff are likely to be needed. This sophisticated system records the details of every incident we respond to, every hour of every day. A good example of that really is, is like New Year's Day, or so the, the evening and the night of New Year's Day where we have such an increase in activity, it's so different to any other day of the year, that we can actually look back at that day, look back historically at what happened on, that, on those sort of early sort of three or four hours of the day, and then realize, you know, use that to work out what we expect to happen this year so we can get the right number of staff on duty, we can get the right number of ambulances there and available to us, so we can respond to the patients that call us in that, in that time. Detailed monitoring has also revealed where our services are most needed. In the last couple of years, we've invested almost £10 million relocating and upgrading ambulance stations to put our staff closer to the patients who need them. The most noticeable in South Warwickshire is that we went from having three traditional urban ambulance stations to going down to the one big centralised hub and lots of community ambulance stations. There are 16 hubs across the region, with each one serving between five and ten community ambulance stations. We've got paramedics in cars out in the communities, so the smaller and more rural areas are actually getting some paramedic cover and paramedics are getting to them much faster. Community stations are all over the West Midlands. They're even at an airport and a fire station. In each district, ambulances are kept on the road by mechanics and ambulance fleet assistants who prepare, restock and clean the vehicles at the ambulance hub. It means that the patient environment in the back of the vehicle, even if it's been to something like a muddy field or out in the, in the countryside, still is like a clinical environment that you'd find in a hospital. It also means crews are freed up to spend more time helping patients. The Ambulance Trust has an enormous fleet of vehicles. Over 220 rapid response cars, all 4x4s. Over 350 emergency ambulances and over 200 other vehicles, including specialist units like this one for emergencies, logistics, training and development. All our vehicles are less than five years old and together transport patients well over a million miles a month using nearly 400,000 litres of fuel. Our modern ambulances carry a vast array of equipment for carrying patients, providing oxygen and pain relief and diagnosing heart, stroke and trauma conditions. The area we cover includes Britain's second biggest city, Birmingham, but also has some of the most remote areas in the country. In more isolated communities, we get support from community first responders. They're all volunteers who we've trained to provide first aid and basic life support in their communities until our paramedics get there. Hi, yeah. Can you tell me what's been happening? Yeah, I've been feeling really faint. Have you? Well, community responder is, is, is always part of a big team event. But knowing that you've contributed to saving that person's life is absolutely fantastic sensation. For the most serious emergencies, we have access to five air ambulances. This allows us to fly a highly trained doctor to the scene of the incident very quickly. 
If required, the helicopter can then speed the critically injured patient to a specialist hospital at over 160 miles an hour. At night, it's the Medical Emergency Response Incident Team, MERIT for short, that responds to the most serious traumas. With a senior doctor on board, it speeds life-saving medical treatments, usually only found in hospitals, to the scene of the most serious accidents. It's a pioneering service and acknowledged as the best in the country. GP1 over. We're also leading the field in working with other health professionals. In Worcester, we're teaming up with GPs. Well, the GP's based in the ambulance service uh, every day, uh, eight hours a day. And when we get a call from a crew, then we pop into our own cars and go out and see the patients who've perhaps called an ambulance for an emergency problem that they think they might need to go to hospital for. Uh, but we can come in and see them in their homes and keep them there by, by treating them um, at home and arranging the services around them where they are. And in Birmingham, a whole range of agencies support the city centre treatment unit that we set up in Broad Street every Friday and Saturday night. Well, we've got a wide variety of staff that work here. We've got a nurse practitioner who has extended skills, can do things like suturing, gluing, wound care, um, above what a normal paramedic can do. And we're also heavily supported by the British Red Cross, who volunteers who assist us uh, during our peak periods of a Friday and Saturday night. The treatment unit also works closely with the police, street wardens and local churches who provide city pastors. We do reduce the numbers going to A&E, but also because we are dedicated to within the city centre, we reduce the number of ambulances that are normal shifts and normal duties that have got to be dragged into the city centre, so they're still available to go to a patient who lives in the rest of Birmingham. West Midlands Ambulance Service is leading the way in providing high quality care to patients in the community, 24 hours a day, often in very challenging circumstances. As demand continues to rise, our staff are increasingly working with colleagues throughout the health and social care sector to ensure patients receive the right treatment in the right place and at the right time. The ambulance service has changed uh, substantially over, an, over a number of years and I think we're in a really strong place now to create even greater uh, opportunities for improvement going forward over the next five to ten years.